so uh, dear students uh, welcome back to our uh, discussion on vapor compression refrigeration systems now let us uh, uh, today let us discuss uh, another problem on vapor compression refrigeration system so the problem will be like this an ammonia refrigerator an ammonia refrigerator produces 15 tons of ice from water at 0 degree celsius in a day the temperature range of the working cycle is 25 degree celsius and minus 15 degree celsius the ammonia vapor is dry saturated at the end of the compression assuming actual cop is 55% of the theoretical find the power required to drive the compressor to we have to find out the mass flow rate in kilogram per minute take the latent heat of ice as 335 kJ per kilogram and cp of water as 4.2 4.2 kJ per kilogram degree celsius okay so now again uh, let us uh, read the question an ammonia refrigerator is producing 15 tons of ice from water at 0 degree celsius in a day so Uh, they are to- uh, talking about a refrigerator with uh, ammonia uh, here they has mentioned it as a ammonia refrigerator so what does that mean this refrigerator is using ammonia as the working fluid or ammonia is the refrigerant so we have to straight away take up the tables for uh, ammonia okay then this refrigerator is producing 15 tons of ice and uh, from where it is producing uh, from water at 0 degree celsius and uh, the, all this happens in one day okay then the temperature range of the working cycle is 25 degree celsius and minus 15 degree celsius what does this mean the upper limit the upper temperature limit is 25 degree celsius and the lower temperature limit is minus 15 degree celsius okay or we can say that the uh, surroundings temperature can be 25 degree celsius and the freezer compartment or the evaporator temperature uh can be minus 15 degree celsius okay so here okay uh, now let us again continue reading the ammonia vapor is dry saturated at the end of the compression so here we have to uh, look at uh, uh, so some something interesting is uh, given or here the ammonia vapor is dry saturated at the end of the compression okay so uh, when we recall the uh, details of vapor compression refrigeration system or the standard uh, version of vapor compression refrigeration system the what is the uh, condition of uh, the refrigerant vapor at the end of the compression normally at the end of the compression uh, the uh, refrigerant vapor will be superheated it will not be simply dry saturated it will be normally superheated the, uh, that is what we discussed in the case of standard uh, vcr or standard vapor compression refrigeration system but here uh, this refrigerator is somewhat different from the standard uh, vcrs and that is why they have given it like this the ammonia vapor is only dry saturated at the end of the compression that is the ammonia which is the refrigerant it is becoming only dry saturated uh, vapor and uh, at the end of the compression so what does that mean so we have to we can straight away uh, try to draw the ts diagram and ph diagram so when we draw the ts diagram we can first draw the uh, inverted uh, bell sh- bell curve or the uh, vapor dome okay so here what is uh, now normally we will be representing uh, 4 to 1 our refrigeration step Uh, constant pressure heat addition step or 4 to 1 will be our refrigeration step so normally 1 to 2 uh, the our isentropic compression will be like this but normally in uh, standard vcrs this point 2 will be outside the vapor dome or it will be in the superheated uh, vapor state but here in this question uh, it is mentioned the ammonia vapor is only dry saturated at the end of the compression so what does that mean at the end of the compression so you can look over here at the end of the compression or uh, po- at point 2 uh, the uh, ammonia vapor is becoming only dry saturated vapor at uh, the end of the compression or uh, we should mark the point 2 on the vapor dome not above or not outside the vapor dome but the point 2 should be marked on the vapor dome 
so that is why we are marking the point 2 on the vapor dome but uh, how uh, how uh, the other point uh, point 1 will be changing the the point 1 will be inside the vapor dome why because uh, 1 to 2 will be always a isentropic compression process that is the safest assumption there is nothing else uh, mentioned about the uh, compression process uh, uh, in this question okay so we can safely assume the uh, compression process as uh, isentropic compression so isentropic compression in a ts diagram will be always a vertical line so uh, already we have marked the point 2 on the uh, vapor dome so uh, drawing a vertical line from 2 uh, downwards okay it will be meeting the refrigeration line 4 to 1 at point 1 so uh, that is how that is how we will be getting the point 1 inside the vapor dome or what will be the condition of uh, the ammonia refrigerant at point 1 it will it will not be simply uh, tri saturated but it will be a mixture of vapor and liquid because it is uh, because this point is coming inside the vapor dome uh, inside the vapor dome this this difference or this is the main uh, speciality of this question okay so here we are considering a point 1 or uh, the at the uh, the condition of the refrigerant at the start of the compression is a mixture of both liquid and vapor that is the speciality of this question okay then the other uh, process are remaining same 2 to 3 it will be our uh, heat rejection or uh, the heat exchanger process Uh, constant pressure heat rejection process nothing else is mentioned in the question so we can assume it uh, same as the uh, standard vcr so 2 uh, to 3 will be horizontal line then 3 uh, to 4 will be our uh, constant enthalpy expansion process and 4 to 1 will be our good old uh, refrigeration step okay so now we have completed the temperature entropy diagram now uh, we can mark the temperatures so here it is given Uh, the temperature range of the working cycle is 25 degree celsius and minus 15 degree celsius so the upper temperature uh, is 25 degree celsius and lower temperature is minus 15 degree celsius so we can mark the upper temperature limit that is t2 and t3 as 25 degree celsius and also the lower temperatures t1 and t4 as minus 15 degree celsius so now we are completing the ts diagram now let us focus on the pressure enthalpy diagram okay already we have discussed point 2 will be coming on the vapor dome not outside the vapor dome or not inside the vapor dome but on the vapor dome so uh, and also 1 uh, to 2 will be compression process or isentropic compression process it will be an inclined line like this so drawing an inclined line so uh, first of all you mark the point 2 on the vapor dome then draw an inclined line inside the vapor dome so it will be meeting the line uh, the horizontal line from 1 Uh, sorry uh, from 4 at uh, and both this inclined line and the horizontal line from 4 it will be meeting at the point 1 so here also the point 1 is coming inside the vapor dome or uh, the nature of the refrigerant at point 1 will be uh, a mixture of both liquid and vapor so actually what is the point 1 it is the starting point of the compression process the all the other process are remaining same 2 to 3 it is our constant pressure heat rejection process happening at the heat exchanger 3 to 4 it is our constant enthalpy uh, expansion process or uh, throttling process 4 to 1 is our uh, constant pressure heat absorption or refrigeration step okay so mm, then they are giving uh, assume actual cop is 55% of the theoretical one so uh, let it be like that so uh, we will be discussing it uh, when we are Uh, reaching that point then wh- what all things we have no, we have to find out here find out the power required to drive the compressor so here so here we have to uh, first of all find out the compressor work okay now uh, the second one is to find out the mass flow rate in kilogram per minute and also the latent heat of ice so what is this meaning latent heat of ice means latent heat of fusion of ice or latent heat of melting of ice both are same Uh, it will. It is given as 335 kilojoules per kilogram. Actually, uh, if if possible, you try to remember this value. It may not be given in the question directly. Okay. Then CP of water also. It will be 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. This is also a standard value. If possible, you try to uh, remember this value. Okay. Then now uh, we can straight away refer to uh, the tables of ammonia. 
uh, the uh, the the uh, designation of that refrigerant is R seven one seven, and it is coming at uh, page number five of CP Kodan Ramen data book. Okay, so first of all we need to find out the uh, work done by the compressor. So uh, which is that compressor work uh, one to two. One to two here in the pressure enthalpy diagram. So uh, from pressure enthalpy diagram, we can straight away write like this: the work done by the compressor will be H2 minus H1. Uh, H2 minus H1 simply it will be uh, per kilogram uh, or per unit mass flow rate of the refrigerant. So we can multiply it by the mass flow rate of the refrigerant in order to get the full value as in uh, kilojoules. Okay, so. Uh, now we'll just try to find out all these uh, respective values. So what is H2? H2 condition of point uh, the condition of refrigerant at point two will be dry saturated vapor, and also the what is the temperature at point two? It will be 25 degrees Celsius. So that is why we can take H2 as Hg value at 25 degrees Celsius, and from the tables we can straight away find that value as 1483.105 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. Now that is H2. Now what is H1? We can we have to find out H1. So what is the condition of uh, uh, of this ammonia refrigerant at point one? It is uh, the ammonia refrigerant will be uh, having both liquid and vapor uh, form uh, when it is at point one. Okay. So how we can write that enthalpy at one or H1 will be enthalpy of the liquid content plus enthalpy of the vapor content. So that is that is how we can write write that you may have studied in your uh, junior classes that is HF or enthalpy of the fluid or enthalpy of the liquid content plus H H HFG HFG means what is the uh, uh, enthalpy of the vapor content in this liquid vapor mixture HFG is simply HG minus HF okay and what is this X value well, that is the dryness fraction okay actually at a point one uh, the ammonia vapor sorry this ammonia refrigerant will be both uh, it will be containing both liquid ammonia and vapor ammonia so x is nothing but the dryness fraction representing the amount of vapor content of that ammonia uh, at a point one okay so that is why h1 is equal to hf plus x into hfg okay so how we can find uh, this uh, h1 value so uh, first of all we need to find out the uh, dryness fraction or uh, the we have to find out the value of x okay so how uh, now uh, uh, we cannot uh, further use this relation we have to use uh, some other relation so now let us uh, look into some other alternatives oh, and also 1 to 2 is a isentropic uh, process so already we have marked it 1 to 2 is a isentropic compression process. Now let us take the help of that uh, uh, details. So now uh, what does that mean 1 to 2 is a isentropic process. So S2 will be equal to S1. Entropy at 2 will be equal to entropy at 1. But what is this entropy at 2? It will be uh, uh, it will be S2 uh, or Sg value at 25 degrees Celsius. Why? Uh, the condition of uh, refer this refrigerant that point 2 will be gaseous state or vapor state. So S2 uh, or entropy at 2 will be equal to entropy of the gaseous value Sg value at which temperature 25 degree Celsius. Okay, so uh, S2 will be Sg value at 25 degree Celsius. But what is this S1? S1 means uh, entropy of the uh, ammonia refrigerant at point 1. But what is the condition at point 1? The ammonia will be containing both liquid and vapor. So again, just like we have written in the case of uh, enthalpy, we can write the case of entropy also. So this S1 will be equal to Sf plus X into Sfg, where Sf is the entropy of the fluid content, Sfg is the entropy of the vapor content of the ammonia, and X is the dryness fraction. Okay. So uh, with this idea, we will be continuing.